Good evening, everyone. This is Anwar from Rise Up. I'll be your moderator for today. Uh, welcome to episode number four from, from Survive and Thrive web series, where we discuss the impact of COVID-19 on uh, the startup ecosystem as a whole, and I have you as a founder can navigate the crisis with your team and your startup. We have a very special guest for today. We have uh, Taj Jeffries from 500 Startups. Taj is a growth coach at 500 Startups and entrepreneur in residence in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. She's also the founder of Diversa, a digital strategist, uh, a best-selling author, a former TEDx speaker, and a top 50 health blogger from, uh, according to Huffington Post. And these are just some of the few things that uh, Tash is doing right now. Tash is also an old friend of us at Rezep, where she gave uh, a very cool workshop on growth for startups last year in 2019. Uh, so Tash, hello. Hello, thank you so much for having me, Anwar. You're welcome. I'll be leaving you with the presentation right now. And then afterwards, I'll come back to get some uh, Q&A from the audience. Awesome. So okay. welcome, everybody who's tuning in. I'm sure there's many of you that I know. <laughs> so welcome. Um, I won't be able to see the questions right now, but please enter them throughout the presentation. Um, I promise this will be a short one. I actually want to make sure we have time to get to your questions. So I'll make sure after the presentation, we'll get to the questions that you have. Uh, so let's first start off and make sure my tech works here. Um, Anwar already told you a bit about me and you can see it here. He's already talked. Um, I have experience as a founder and entrepreneur since 2012 and I've worked globally, thank goodness. And so I am familiar with not just the markets in North America and in Europe, but also here in the MENA region. And my passion really is working with startup founders and helping you to grow your businesses and for you to be rock stars and contribute to the world and have thriving businesses. So that being said, today we're going to go over why being online is necess necessary in the age of COVID-19. Um, why does digital marketing matter in the first place? Uh, we're gonna ask the question, is digital marketing right for your startup? And if so, where do you start? We're also going to talk about the channels and which ones are the right ones for you and your audience. And then we're gonna talk about how to actually do some digital media marketing on a shoestring budget, or in this case, most of them are free. And lastly, I'm gonna leave you with some tools for how you can get started with digital media and using content marketing in your strategies. So why do you need to be online in the age of COVID-19? I'm gonna list my top three reasons, but there's literally hundreds if not thousands right now. Because people are now confined to their homes. If you have offline businesses, you're going to have a hard time reaching people because they're not outside, they're not in the malls, they're not going to offices anymore. So you're going to have to find a captive audience, which they are, which is good. Everyone's online now because there's nowhere else to be. And a lot of people are actually bored as well. So you get a chance to actually capture this audience in real time without them having to come to you. You can do it from anywhere in the world. Another thing I didn't mention here too, you now have access to a global market. So if you have a product or service that might've just been locally, you can now go global. People now are more panicked and stressed and many of them don't know what to do. So I want you to think about this during the whole presentation. What is the actual stress that you're able to solve with your product or service that your ideal customers need solved that's going to bring them relief, that's going to remove or relieve some of that stress and make them feel so much value from what it is that you do. No matter what it is that you're doing, your industry, your vertical, the size of your company, you're going to have to answer that question more now than ever before, because that's going to be the only way that you cut through the noise and cut through the marketing garbage that's out there. And last but not least, if you offer relief to your customers, then you can gain them long-term and increase the lifetime value of your customers because they're gonna remember the person who solved their problem and took away their stress and gave them relief. They're going to remember the person, the brand, the company, everything related to what you do if you can solve that. Now is the time for you to focus on the emotional problems or the emotional uh, issues that your customers are having that you can solve because they're going to be more important than features, benefits, or specifics related to what your software or product does. So I want you to keep this in mind as we go through. And why does digital marketing matter? 
Now's your chance to be customer centric and help them through this COVID-19 pro pro pandemic. It's a problem, but it's a pandemic. It's happening globally. If you can figure out a way to help people through this problem and make them feel better, healthier, um, less stressed, more secure, more safe, then it's going to be a win-win. And right now, this is a time that you need to figure out what it is that your product or service is actually doing to tap into that emotional benefit. Now, there's one thing that you learn, I've learned many years ago, <laughs> and sales is that sales not, isn't really sales if you're able to tap in to the emotional reason as to why someone needs your product or service and what you have. And when you have that, you have a win-win. Marketing online is now more affordable than ever. It's actually unfortunate because a lot of big companies are going under, they're downsizing, they can't afford to keep their customers, they're closing their doors. I'm sure there's numerous services that we have here in the MENA region that you've probably heard about that can't afford to keep people. And so because of that, a lot of these companies can't advertise or market anymore, which means that if you are trying to provide something, especially a solution that solves a problem, especially an emotional problem for your customer, you're going to be able to get to them for half, a quarter, and in some cases I've seen even one-tenth of the price that it normally is because you don't have the competition online. A lot of companies are still scrambling about what to do now in COVID-19, which means if you're a small business or a startup, there's a huge opportunity for you to come in with the right messaging and actually help lots of people who are struggling right now. And last but not least, your ability to sell online is unlimited. I mentioned it earlier, but with you being online, you can have access to a global audience and solve global problems. And as a startup here, that's one of the things that excites me the most. Your ability to be able to literally scale what you're doing and make that solution available to hundreds, thousands, possibly millions of people is actually what helps your business to grow if you can create the right messaging. So how do you know if digital marketing is right for your startup? If you can answer yes to any of these questions, then it is. <laughs> You can no longer operate your business in person in your office or anywhere offline. Again, we're all globally right now, for the most part, on quarantine at home and have to deal with curfews. So if that's limiting your business, you need to look online. If your business involves tech, a SaaS, or even a product, like you actually sell something, you need to be online. No exceptions. <laughs> and if you need a way to communicate with your customers 24 seven now, especially because of the crisis period, then again, you need to be online because online is really one of the best ways for you to be able to do it at scale and effectively and cost effectively as well. And then lastly, if you've had to minimize your team, this is now unfortunate, but a reality, there's layoffs that are happening. If you have to now do more with less, then yes, you need to be online. And this is for both B2B and B2C businesses. Really, as long as you have customers, you need to be online. And the truth of the matter is, is this is where any companies that are going to last through this COVID-19 area, they're going to have to be online. Because offline is limited. And with all of the limited movements, not just locally, but globally, you're gonna have to show up in another way and also take um, payments through online uh, gateways. So where do you start? Very first step, you know I've talked a lot about making sure that you solve a problem for your customer. Well, you need to actually start with knowing who your customer persona is. Now, the customer persona and how do you make sure you've got the right one is a long process, but basically what you wanna look at is your, your current customer base, know their age, um, their um, gender, whether they're single or married, because then you'll know if they have kids and, and a family to support, what kind of work that they do, if you can, their income levels. And this is part of the demographics that you want to know, because all of those details are important to, in understanding what their actual root cause of their problem is and being able to provide a solution that's going to resonate with them. So you need to understand your customer persona. And once you have the right persona, you need to understand what they're dealing with right now 
in regards to what your product or service or solution can actually help them with and what's the most pressing problem that they need help with right now. And then you have to figure out where they are online because they're all somewhere online. Everybody is using Google, on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram is blowing up right now. So you need to understand where they are and you need to create content that solves their most pressing problem. So you really need to put yourself in your customer's shoes at this time. And that's going to be the key to you actually growing or sustaining your business while we have this COVID-19 pandemic going on. How do you know if you have the right customer personas? You're going to talk to your customers. Anyone who's familiar with our program at 500 knows that we literally say this almost every day <laughs> because it's so important. How do you know if you're actually solving your customers' problems if you're not talking to them? You need to understand where they're at and what their needs are and then figure out how you can actually serve them better. Now, I'm not going to actually go through all the different channels because there are quite a lot. I will make sure that I share this presentation with you. It'll be available just for 48 hours for anyone who's uh, watching this uh, webinar right now. But literally, all you need to know basically is that each channel operates in a different way from the type of content that's best for you to actually start trending on them to the number of hashtags and hashtags are what you are used so that you can be searched for by a keyword on that platform. So each platform has its own set of rules and regulations for how they operate. And that's pretty much all I wanted to tell you because there's a lot of them to go through and you'll be able to understand which ones are for you. Let me just give a brief overview of pretty much what you're looking at. If you're looking at reaching a younger demographic, um, millennials, then you're going to look at um, most likely Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, also Instagram. If you're looking at anyone older than millennials, millennials and over, um, Facebook, Instagram, you're going to have LinkedIn as well because that's the professional platform. And anyone younger than millennials, you're looking at Snapchat. And then everyone uses WhatsApp and YouTube, especially here in the MENA region. That's where they consume a lot of content and discover um, new things, uh, new hobbies, music, news. Uh, they use those channels. So that's an overview. But again, you'll get this in the presentation. Now, so you know your customer persona and you know the channels that you're probably thinking of using to reach your customer, your ideal customer. Now, what do you create? And here I will go into detail because these are important for you to know. Pretty much everything I'm going to go over are either free or low cost for you to actually use to be able to get leads and discover who needs the solution that you have to provide. And the first one is simple and easy for everyone to create and that's a blog post. If you do a blog post and you're solving your ideal customer's problem and you show them step by step how to do it, then that is something that people will remember. And if you include an offer somewhere in that post, they're gonna click, especially if they want more. If they want more relief and they want more of what you have to offer, they're going to click. The next thing that I love to use and I suggest all of you consider is a lead magnet. A lead magnet is another form. It's usually in the, down, uh, in the form of a downloadable PDF that you actually have a landing page that you can direct traffic to when people download that information, and again, it's something that solves a problem or potentially a checklist, a how-to checklist, when they download it, they get you, you get their email address. So it's a great way to build your lead list and to build potential people that you can actually reach out to who want to use your product or service. Next thing, you're actually on it. Host a webinar. If you're able to do a webinar, again, Everything is related to solving a problem for your ideal customers. If you're able to show them how to do it in real time, again, make sure that you have an offer before the end of the webinar so that they can actually sign up and make use of what it is that you actually do have on offer. The whole goal here is to provide value so that you're helping them and that you don't become just another salesperson trying to do something during the age of COVID. And the last one is get interviewed. See if there's uh, news outlets, they're always looking for contributors. 
uh, subject matter experts who actually want to have you on so you can discuss how your solution is helping people all over the world or even locally. And once you have those interviews, and the same with the webinar, you can take that content and actually turn it into blog posts so that you archive that and you can use SEO, which helps you come up in Google searches. You can use that content again on your website, on your social media, and repurpose that content. Uh, another one is share a survey and get feedback from your customers, your ideal customers. They're the ones who are going to know if you're doing a great job or not. If you are doing a great job, you then have content and you can also give a coupon or give a discount on another product or service that you can offer to them as a thank you. Create an email sequence. When you do that, again, you're solving a problem. Everything here is solving a problem for them. And contribute to a local news source. If you know some sources for news, uh, again, just like the previous one where you're giving an, um, an interview for, this one would be you contributing a post. At the end of the day, I want you to get creative and think innovative about how you can provide value to people who are going through this crisis and are in need of some stress relief, some comfort, some security. And if what you have is able to provide that to them, they won't forget you even long after this pandemic has passed. So here are some of my favorite tips for when you're creating content. Uh, the first one is batch your content. If you can create a whole series of tweets, Facebook posts, uh, Instagram posts, LinkedIn posts, all at once, sit down, block out a few hours and just create it and use a calendar. And I have some tools that will help you do all of this at the end of the presentation. Create content as you're inspired. If you end up reading a, a news article or end up reading your own on another blog post that you feel like, wow, I wanna actually write about this because I have a spin on this that can help my customers, then just do it. And don't feel you always have to be the one that's the source of these ideas as well. When you're creating content, remember to create both evergreen and real-time content. So ever, ever, evergreen content is what will stay on your search engines and on Google's and help you get ranked because that information is not gonna go stale. For instance, if you're doing wellness tips, if you're sharing with people, drink water, eat healthy food, that kind of information is never gonna go stale because it's going to be the same for a long time. Whereas if you're writing about COVID-19, you have to make sure that you're continuously updating your stats and your information because this thing changes on a daily. So remember to do both. And then with a tool that I show you um, in, a, in a minute here, you'll be able to actually create content once and then just simply alter it depending on the platform. I mentioned earlier that each platform has certain ways that it likes to interact with your, your content. So using a tool like the one I'm going to show you, you'll be able to do that. So you'll be able to create content once and just simply tweak it according to the platforms that it's going to be posted on, which is really a time saver. And now, here is almost the end. This is my favorite part. I'm gonna introduce you to some of my favorite tools and all of them I use, by the way. Um, so first of all, if you do not have a website and you're just transitioning online, I highly, highly, highly recommend wilt.com. You can actually create a website in under five minutes. And it sounds like, how is that possible? It actually works, and I know, because my own website, which is launching this week, was actually made on this platform. Uh, you get a professional website online in less than five minutes. They have a free and paid plan, but I would suggest if you already have a functioning business, then use a paid plan so that you can actually get a custom URL and be able to attach what your business and company is already known for and leverage that brand. And the thing I love about this tool is that it's available in both Arabic and English, because I know most of you are tuning in from the MENA region, so you can actually have websites in both languages and you're good to go. The next one is Funnel. Funnel Lololo is what I refer to it as. This is also one of the companies from our uh, portfolio. And what you can do with this is use it to help you actually optimize your sales conversions. So this is as simple to install on your website as putting uh, a Google code onto your website if you're using Google Analytics. It's very simple and again, you can contact um, and reach out to uh, the, the company itself if you have any questions or are considering using it. 
But the great thing about this is that it's integrated with so many different social media and digital media platforms that it doesn't matter where you're doing your marketing, you can actually have it and be able to use it in your business. So check this out. It's a time saver and it actually works. The next one is Canva. Canva is great for creating your images that you're using for your social media posts, for doing covers, for your videos, for any promotions. Uh, this is really great to use and also free. So all of these um, tools that you're hearing about are either free, have a freemium model, or very economical to use. So it doesn't matter the size of your business, um, they'll work for you. The thing I love about Canva is it has templates. So you can actually, if you are running out of creative ideas and need some inspiration, you don't have to create things from scratch. You can literally just go on, select one of the templates, and then fill in your info and your text and your image from there and go ahead to use it. Um, and I love this too because how I talked about earlier, I went a social media platform, you can create once and then use it across platform. The same is with this. You can create an image, and use it on Facebook, which has a different size requirement than Instagram, which is different from Twitter. So it'll allow you to give all the sizes and just do it once. And last but not least, to manage your social media posts and calendars, Hootsuite, again, is free to use, and then it's a minimal cost if you have more than three social media accounts to post to, but it works with all major social media platforms, Twitter, um, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, it does them all, most of them. Let me take that back, not all, it does most of them. <laughs> And it can be used not just to post, but also to listen. So if you're looking for the responses that you're getting in the online space, you're able to actually select for them and get those back. Uh, it also allows you to literally view your content calendar and to know when your posts are coming out when and make sure that you never run out of posts to put in and also allows for you if you have team members who are able to manage it all of you can actually check at the same time and be able to control the messaging that's going out to your customers so um, i'm going to give you some examples of some actually you know what we're not going to go through the best in class because that'll be in the presentation which you can view i would rather take any questions that you have so anwar feel free to go ahead and open it up thank you so much everyone yeah. i hope you enjoyed those tips and again i shortened my presentation it's usually longer but i want to be able to help you in real time so would love to hear your questions. Uh, thank you so much, Tash, for the super cool and super insightful presentation. Uh, we'll be starting with the Q&A so far. And now it's the Q&A time for the audience to be uh, to know. Uh, the, the presentation is over and if you to, uh, guys to ask whatever. We have Omar Dia. Uh, hi, will you post the recording of the session? Sure, the session will be uploaded on YouTube after, after the webinar is over. We have uh, Ali. Uh, for a, traditional, for a traditional family business selling mechanical parts and mainly focused on B2B and informal selling, how would you suggest going digital? Uh, so uh, selling, selling automotive parts, was that what I heard correctly? Mechanical parts. Mechanical yeah. parts and mainly yeah. focused on B2B. Well, here's yeah. the thing. Um, on your businesses, it doesn't matter what your focus is. If you're focused on a specific um, vertical or a type of industry, if you're selling mechanical parts, all of the companies that you're probably selling to are going to be online anyway. And if they're smaller, then maybe not. However, you have to think very strategic at this time and you have to think about all of the businesses that are thriving during this time most of them will have an online presence and be doing business online and be doing business remotely anyway. So your focus is actually to find those businesses that are still up and running and are still actually utilizing your services and be able to actually connect with them on online spaces. So since you're connecting B2B as well, many of these people might be uh, able to be uh, found on LinkedIn. And if not, this is a time where you actually utilize your network. Um, you should be able to reach out to different organizations. For instance, there's local uh, chamber of commerce, things like that for the smaller businesses that you can get. But I guarantee you, even those people, the business owners, the executives who are running these businesses, they're looking for things online. So even if you're traditionally doing offline, 
B2B especially, you should have some type of online presence because also people are going to start Googling you and seeing if you exist for a trust issue. There's so much stress around. Nobody wants to deal with a company that's going to be out of business within the next six months. So you having an online presence is going to help build your trust and your credibility. And it's a great investment for you, even post COVID. Interesting, uh, Khalid Al Nasser. Is there a tool to manage all tools and figure out what tools are best for us? There are so many tools out there and I have trouble figuring out what's there and what's best for me. Got it. Great question, Khalid. And the first thing that I would say is, again, um, the presentation, I'll make sure before the end of this call, I'll put in the link so that you can have access to the presentation. You need to understand who your customer persona is. Um, depending on who it is, you won't need to be on all the channels. You need to focus on where your customers are going to be. So depending on what kind of business you are, uh, which is uh, what you have, I'd say really, ultimately, it doesn't matter who your customer is, there's probably three, probably tops, platforms that you're going to exist on. And the tool that I gave Hootsuite is one of the, it can handle almost any social media platform, especially the big ones that you need. So really, if you're doing this properly, you only need one tool, you might need three accounts, potentially four, depending on what it is specifically that you do but you don't need to be everywhere all at once. Know where your customers are and build up your platforms there. And that's the best thing for you to do. Maximize and optimize and keep it simple. Great question. Uh, okay, there's a kind of similar question. Salma asks, um, if I'm still starting out on digital platforms, should I pick one or two platforms to post valuable content or should I push across uh, as much pl platforms as possible? Um, I would say again, uh, thanks so much for the question. And again, you need to think about your business and where are your customers spending their time? I would not suggest you just spray and pray, which is what we call when you have like 10 social media platforms and you're doing crappy content on each one. I would rather see you pick one or two channels and really think about the quality of the content and post things that specifically your customers are actually looking for and asking for and solving their problem. So again, less is more in the digital marketing and social media space. You don't need to be everywhere at once. Know your customers, talk to your customers, find out what they're doing, and then give more information on those uh, social media streams that they're using. Interesting, uh, Khaled again. Do you think that some companies should be shifting from B2B to B2C to B2C if the sales cycle are going to be longer after the pandemic? Um, so um, I always answer this question all the time and any one of my uh, startup companies who works with me knows that I don't believe in this whole idea of a long sales process. If you're offering value to your customers and you're solving a problem that's keeping them up at night, then your sales process, it doesn't matter the size of what you're selling, it can be short. And I know this because I'm seeing some of my companies right now during COVID who have shortened sales processes from like three months down to a week. So I want you to go back and understand what is the problem that you're solving. And when it comes to whether you should be shifting from B2B or B2, to B2C, I want you to think about, again, it all comes back to the problem you're solving. If the problem you're solving is geared towards businesses that can use it for their entire teams or for their customers, then you can potentially think about that shift. But you really have to understand your product and understand the value that you're getting before you decide to switch one way or another. And then the next thing you have to understand, how much value are you giving them with your solution? Are you either able to save the money or make the money or give them a high feeling of relief because you're taking care of a problem that there currently isn't a solution for right now? So you need to understand that very clearly before you figure out where you should be shifting. And I would say, literally, look at the companies that you're seeing advertising right now because those are probably the companies that are thriving or at least in operation during the pandemic. And that can also be a gauge as to who's in the space, especially if you're considering B2B. See who's still around online because some of them are coming off. Like it's, things are a little shaky for a lot of big businesses right now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, Craig from Yellow Parking is saying hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any, any tips to sell during... <laughs> Any tips to sell during a pandemic, uh, hard selling or relationship building? 
Hey, Craig, so you can probably catch the recording, but the whole first part of my presentation was talking about literally solve your customers' problems. If you can solve their problems. So I know specifically your business very well, just so you know, Craig is one of our portfolio companies. Okay, yeah, I see. <laughs> exactly. But think about the people who literally they're on curfew and they can only be out for a few hours a day. Nobody wants to waste time looking for parking. So if you can impress upon whether it's the building owners that you're helping, you know, you're going to make sure that your people aren't stressed even when they do have to come in or when they do have to travel or express that to your potential customers. Focus on the stress that they're having with limited hours of the day and you're giving them that time back. And I guarantee if you focus on the problem that you're solving, you're alleviating that time crunch and you sing that value to your customers and you give actual real life case studies, because I know you got them, then you'll be able to actually use that. And honestly, I know a lot of companies are like, well, I don't want to do a hard sell during COVID-19, but if you're solving a real problem and you're giving people time back, you're giving people like relief and you're giving them that feeling, then don't be afraid to sell. You're not selling, you're actually helping them solve a problem. And that is how you actually position it. You're helping them solve a problem. So that's okay. great. And you can also use that on the B2B side as well. Solve a problem. No business wants to deal with stressful employees. You're helping to make sure that their team stays engaged. All teams are suffering right now with morale. If they're working remotely and then they only get to come into the office, you know, a little bit of the time and they need to get around, you need to maximize their time to be with their team and that face time. So again, it's all about what's the problem you're solving, making sure the team stays together and they keep morale up. So again, there's nothing about parking in there. There's nothing about supply. You need to move away from the features and benefits and think about emotional benefits that they're getting, the emotional relief that they're getting from what you're doing. Great questions. Thanks so much. Okay. And Nancy, Kamel, do you find it sensitive to market business online with a COVID-19 aspect? Will it give a shade of being opportunistic? Nancy, great question. And again, these are the questions I get all the time when I'm working in sales. If you're focusing on providing relief to your customers and solving their problems, it doesn't matter whether it's COVID or anything else that's going on. Anybody who's willing to solve my problem, they're going to get my money. I'm not out of money and there's a lot of people who are still working in this time so they do have cash to spend why should they have to suffer and get a lack of opportunities and a lack of services provided to them just because we're dealing in this pandemic we still have to live we still have families to take care of we still have friends to see we still have things to buy clothes to wear food to eat there's so many different things that still operate in our lives so why should we also be limited by choice just because something is going on in the world? We just have to trust that it's going to solve, it's going to get solved and it's going to work out. But in the meantime, we still need to find some type of comfort in our lives. So if your solution is able to help people get through that and take some headache off their head, why not sell? Provide a solution and be of service. Great question. Perfect. Uh, Sonel Sivarajan, sorry if I mispronounce. <laughs> For a second, Sheree, tell, tell Mohammed that I said hello to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mohammed from Take Your Matter, yeah. yeah <laughs> Looks like yeah. you have really a large pool of fans, Tash. <laughs> I, do. I love them all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, our next question uh, Clients are worried about brand safety, the ads being placed alongside negative content like infection, death related to COVID. Uh, should they be worried about this, uh, this scenario? I would say they shouldn't be worried about this scenario if they have you, so. <laughs> and what are the solutions for the problem? This is the second part of the question. Absolutely. Um, we have a um, solution for the problem um, right now. So, I mean, we do have services and Sunil, well, I have to make sure we provide uh, your business name here. Go ahead and type it in the chat so people know. We do have some solutions, one that I know of that actually helps to uh, provide uh, brand safety. But for the most part, there aren't too many solutions that are out there, which is why you're going to have to uh, wait and see Sunil's 
company that actually helps. But I mean, in the, at the end of the day, this is why it's so important. No matter what business that you're in, brand safety is super important, which is why you want to be in the age of COVID-19. You can't just be one of the companies that we see a lot of that are actually just ignoring COVID-19 and posting their regularly scheduled content. You yeah. actually acknowledge what we're in. We're dealing with a pandemic. It is global. Everybody is impacted. Doesn't matter what country in the world you're in, we have cases. And so when you're looking at your content, you need to be very aware of what you're doing. You need to make sure that you have uh, everything in, in check when it comes to the content that you're putting out. And you need to be very aware and speak to your customers as if they know that we're in the middle of a pandemic, but we're trying to you know, contribute to your quality of life as much as possible with our offering. So, I mean, that's super important. So yes, simplify, simplify that. Lab. Make sure that we have uh, you um, also added in here. Uh, thanks, Sunil. We'll make sure that people know about it because it is super important for you to be able to uh, manage your brand safety. And thanks so much for that. I love it, love it, love it. There we go. Hi from Sharif at Funnel. Uh, thank you for the mention. Speaking to your point, we did, we did see an increase in demand for our service as more companies start giving extra focus to their online channel. So for all startups on the call, Tash Advice is well tested and works. Best of luck to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Rafe. <laughs> I thought there was a question at the end. Oh, my God. <laughs> Funny. That's hilarious. No, seriously, uh, everybody who's on this call will get access to um, the, the companies. And thank you to all the founders. We have so many tech founders on this call. I want to say yeah. one thing before we wrap up or see if there's any other questions. I wish all of you the best of luck at this time. May all of you and your families and your colleagues all be safe. And if you continue to use what I'm talking about here and that you put your customer first and help them to uh, relieve emotional stress, then you'll still be here in a year's time when inshallah I'll be back in the region. So um, I wish you all the best in using this to either transition to online or to continue to grow in the online space because it's not going away. It's only going to grow. Uh, we have like a couple of questions from Facebook. Absolutely. Let, let, let us take them first. Yeah. So the first question, one second. Uh, if I have a mobile app published today, what are the quick steps to promote it and make it popular? Um, okay, so you'll notice that there's a trend and a theme here. I would actually start talking about your app in a blog post and distribute it to your network and the people that you know who are potentially influencers in your network. And again, your app needs to be solving a problem and you need to be able to clearly talk about the problem that it's solving. Don't focus on the, the features and the benefits and the tech, because honestly, nobody cares. I've been working in tech now for like eight years. Nobody cares. Talk about what the solution's going to give to your user. And if you do a, a, a blog post like that, if you see if there's an outlet that's willing to promote you, let's say on um, uh, a TechCrunch or one of those and try to reach out to the folks there and get a review, like you're going to have to be very creative about how can you spread the word about what it's doing. And then as soon as you do that, start talking to your users. Let your users tell you why what you created is so awesome. Don't just put it out there and expect that, you know, everything's going to trickle in. As soon as you have users, start talking to them and getting in their words why they like using the solution if it's working for them. So feedback, 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 feedback is key for you to be able to share it very quickly. Okay, interesting. Um, Salma's asking, at what stage should I consider outsourcing my digital production or management? At what stage? Um, as soon as you realize that you, I would say, for instance, if you know you have product market fit and you can actually afford to do it because outsourcing your digital marketing, it's quite expensive to have people who can do it right, who can do it on brand, who can maintain consistency, who will continuously, 
continuously keep in touch with your customers, it's going to cost a pretty penny to do that. So if you are working at a profit and you're making money in your original sales with your business and you're able to su support the cost of having a marketing engine, then by all means do it. Uh, once you know that uh, you're able to like consistently pay for that budget for a good marketing team, then why not consider it? But I would say if you're not at that part where you have product market fit or you don't have consistent income generation, revenue generation, then I would say you can use the simple tools that we talked about here until you're at a point where you can actually start growing and then outsource it. Oh, I think you're muted. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question, uh, how to raise funds for a new medical device that's patent pending and there might be a high risk of intellectual, pro intellectual property theft? How do you start if there's a potential for intellectual property theft? Yeah, how to raise funds. Okay, so I think first of all you have to consider there's a huge barrier to entry, especially right now for any health tech product because I mean who's going to be able to afford that? Um, so I think really with any product, especially if there's a patent, uh, patent pending, your thing is to be able to, I'll go back, I stress this, and you're going to think I'm a broken record, but you need to know that people want to actually buy and use what you have. If you're able to uh, figure out which customers actually want to buy this solution, then I'd say build your customer base. Start getting it into the hands of people who can use it. And if you're still fundraising for it, you still need to show that there is an, a request and a market for what you're doing. So again, don't be afraid to talk to potential customers. See if you've got something that they actually want. Honestly, the whole idea about protecting your idea, if people wanted to do it and they can do it, if they have no idea how to sell it, but you do, then who's going to be the first one over the finish line? It's going to be you. You need to know that you have something that people actually want. And that's the only thing that you need to prove to be successful. People want what you have and you're able to sell it and get it into their hands. So I'd say don't be so worried about the risk there. Just get the sales, get your customers, find the people who can actually use and benefit what you have. And then you, that's, that's half the battle. Fantastic. Um, many startups are slashing marketing budget as they are not deemed essential while we're, play, we're trying to survive COVID. So what's your advice on spe spending smartly on, uh, on digital marketing? Everything I talked about in this presentation was free. So I would say leverage your ability to be a founder and to be a subject matter expert and get your knowledge in your given vertical and in your industry, get it out there during all, using all the free channels. Right now, there are so many news outlets globally that are looking for experts to talk about different issues, especially as it relates to COVID. Doesn't matter the industry. So I would say use all your free channels at this time. And again, you're not alone. Like probably at least a third of the companies that I work with are experiencing the same downturn of had to like you know get rid of their digital marketing teams but if you're a founder and you're an expert in your vertical and in your field you should be able to give advice and talk about what's happening especially in the age of covid as it relates to your business to your product to your industry whatever it is that you're doing so utilize all the free channels you can right now and i can even tell you from this i mean anwar how long did it take for us to put this together like realistically we started promoting for this not too long ago and we have like lots of people who've been tuning in and asking questions so yeah. i mean Utilize your free sources and create that content and keep repurposing and reusing it. Okay, cool. Uh, one last question. Uh, what? what are the consume the changes in the consumer trends you see uh, post COVID? I have seen that people are really bored. Really <laughs> bored, bored. So lots of yeah. uh, lots of self care. Um, there's a trend that um, is not really in the MENA region, but in North America, people are starting to buy like lots of entertaining kind of things at home because they're treating themselves to, uh, you know, very fancy dinners and 
buying a lot of home care things. Uh, so those are what I'm seeing in consumer trends. And believe it or not, people are actually buying more clothes, um, even yeah. though they're stuck at home. I've done it That's myself. <laughs> oh, right? <Yeah. laughs> because I mean, people want to go online, you still want to look good online. Um, yeah. But as far as the trend, I think really, again, the thing to remember about cons this consumer market, and again, it doesn't matter what product or service you're offering directly to B2C or uh, in that space, so many people are dealing with so much stress and overwhelm and boredom and anxiety and limited movement. So whatever it is that you're offering, if you can offer some relief and help them stop worrying about being on lockdown and having curfews and having only like, you know, what, six hours or something crazy in the day to actually get things done, nine hours. Yeah. Like, if you can help contribute and make somebody's life easier and their life better, then what you're not doing is selling. You're providing a solution and a service and something that helps give them some peace of mind, some mental wellness back, relieve some anxiety and some stress. And that's your focus in anything that you're selling. Uh, so I would just literally just like just make sure you understand how you can give that to your customers and you will way outlast the COVID-19 pandemic for sure. Okay, interesting. Um, I have just one comment. People on Zoom and on Facebook, they're showering you with lots of love and high messages and we love you, Tash, and all that stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I should say that before we close. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And I hope that you got the energy because I miss you all so much. So this is also my way of sending you energy and love through this pandemic and hoping that you're all safe and well and thriving and uh, that you're doing, doing your thing and making us all proud, as I know you are. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taj. This was super insightful and super engaging. Uh, and so I hope we see you soon in Cairo. Uh, I'll be so back thank you. when the pandemic is over. I'll be back for sure. Yeah, yeah sure. We're going to meet for sure. Uh, uh, and thanks thanks to everyone who tuned in. Um, uh, thank you so much, guys. And have a good day. Bye, Tash. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>